All right, so today we're going to be going over differentiability. And so I think um, the last like few videos I recorded, I just talked about what a derivative is, how to find it using the definition of a derivative. Um, and basically, we also went over limits and all of these sort of topics will combine together in this discussion of differentiability. And here, what we're doing is that our main goal is is um, basically to see if a function has a derivative at some point a comma f of a. Okay, and so going back to the definition of a derivative of derivative, we know that um, the derivative of a function at point a is defined as the limit as x tends to a, f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, right? And so the idea is by the way that we know a limit limits work is if the definition for derivative is based on this limit definition if this limit does not exist that means that it implies that the derivative at point x equals a also does not exist, right? We're, we're, we're looking at this in a very logical manner. We, look at, we looked at what the definition for derivative was, which is this expression, limit as x tends to a, f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, right? And we know that it's possible um, when we look through like the we talked about limits for a few times, right? We know that limits can sometimes not exist. And so if this definition of derivative yields a limit that does not exist, right? That implies that there's no derivative at that point, right? And so um, the whole idea of differentiability is um, it can be pretty helpful to just look at a function and to not have to explicitly write this whole like this expression out and evaluating the limit to see if whether there might be a derivative at that at the point at the function or not and there's some um when we analyze the shape of some specific functions we can instantly see at what points the derivative exists and at what points the function is differentiable so that's what we're gonna basically be talking about so our first class of functions that have points where the derivative doesn't exist is functions with functions with corners okay so um for example imagine f of x is equal to absolute value of x right when we graph that out we're gonna get a v-shaped function right with its vertex at zero zero right now, um, let's, let me just write down the definition of the derivative again, limit as x tends to a f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, right? And it's what this is essentially doing is that if we anchor at a point a, we're basically finding that tangent line at that point, right? And so let's look at, um, let's look at this from the lens of, our left-handed and right-handed um, derivatives, right? So, um, so our right-handed derivative uh, would be coming in from the right to the left side, um, and our slope at that point, right, from our right. So, if we're going, let me change the color. So, if we're going from the right to the left side, right? So, we're going like this. From the positive x towards zero, our um, 
slope of this segment is one, right? And so because and because it's like a line, the derivative is also one. But when we're going from the left to the right, so our left-handed derivative, it's negative one. And notice that point zero, we have a mismatch, right? Our one-sided derivative is not the same. Negative one is not equal to one. So at these corners where we have like an immediate, at these sort of points where we have like an immediate sort of shift um, and it forms this V-shaped pattern, this is called a corner. And because of this um, activity of the left and left left and right hand derivatives, uh, left and right hand one sided derivatives being different at corners, um, the derivative doesn't exist. So our corner is zero comma zero, where the derivative does not exist. Okay. Now, so that was the corners, right? Our second example is something called the cusp. Okay. So now our second example is a cusp. An example of a cusp is um, f of x is equal to x to the power of 2 over 3. And when we graph that, what we're going to get is something like this. Where? Oh. We're going to get something like that. Okay. So notice how um, like similar to our corner, we have like a sharp change. And um, when we start to look at the derivative coming in our right-hand derivative versus our left-hand derivative, right? We again see that our right-hand derivative um, is going to be some positive value, right? Value. Um, and notice how the function starts to like slow down its growth as um, x increases. So it's like a decreasing positive value. Um, whereas when we go from the, the, or not a decreasing positive value, sorry. As we go from the, as we go from positive infinity towards zero, our derivative is going to be an increasing positive value because uh, at higher values of x, our function is growing slower, but like near zero, it's growing very rapidly. Like notice how the slope, like if we try to estimate tangent lines here, the slope's really big, right? And similarly, as we go from negative infinity towards um, zero, our one-sided derivative is going to become like larger negative value, larger negative value, right? And we see that like when we are going to zero, what, what's going to happen is as we go from the positive end, we're going to approach um, a slope of positive infinity and become, and when we come from the negative end, we're going to approach a slope of negative infinity. And so our left-handed derivative is not equal to a right-handed derivative. And because of that, right, um, the derivative at x equals 0 does not exist. So when you have um, graphs that sort of look like this, where the, where the derivatives on like the two separate sides are approaching different uh, magnitudes of infinity, again, you don't have the derivative existing at that point. And that's an example of a cusp. All right. And basically, it's like an extreme case of a corner, right? In the in the example that we saw before with absolute value effects, the um, left hand the the left hand derivative was negative one, and uh, the right hand derivative rapidly changed to one. Right here, it's going from negative infinity all the way from infinity as we cross zero. Right, so you can just kind of imagine how the cusp is like a more extreme version of the corner. So sometimes people ignore the corner. All right, our next example is. Something called a vertical tangent. Uh, 
So vertical tangent is where an example of that, we can see it in f of x is equal to the cube root of x, right? And when we draw it out, we're gonna get something like this, right? And I mean, this is still growing on both ends, but slower, right? So uh, where, what we see is, it's kind of similar to what's happening with the cusp, is um let's start with the our right hand derivative right um as we're coming in from the right side it seems that as we get closer to zero our function is growing faster and faster so coming in so the derivative from the right hand side the right hand derivative right hand derivative seems to approach positive infinity and then if we're coming in from the left hand, so the left hand derivative seems to approach seems to also approach positive infinity, right? And that means um we can't really describe a, like, we can't really describe a tangent line with a slope of infinity, right? Because imagine, um, just, just think of like our classic example of like a line that like this, right? Where we have a vertical line, right? At, you know, x equals three, right? What's the slope of this line, right? It's not defined because our change in uh, x is zero and our change in y is like, you know, a very, it can be any number. Similarly, because the right hand and left hand derivatives both like approach infinity, even though they approach like infinity, which is like the same thing, we can't um, write a tangent line or describe like the slope of a function, which is what the derivative describes. Like you can't have a slope of infinity. And because of that um, vertical tangents, where this would have a vertical tangent at like x equals one, Vertical tangents are also areas where the derivative is not defined. So here we have a vertical tangent. So our derivative is not defined. Okay. And then, so our final example, which I think this one's the most intuitive out of them all, is a discontinuity. Oh, oh this should be four. Our final example is a discontinuity. So imagine a piecewise function, u of x, right? Where it's like negative one if x is less than zero and one if x is greater than or equal to zero, right? So when we graph that out, we're gonna get something like this. Um, since it's greater than or equal to zero, we're gonna put a filled circle, and then we're gonna put a hollow circle, and it's something like this, right? So if we're told to find the um, derivative at x equals zero, right? Let's do the whole um, left and right hand side derivative analysis. Um, when we when we do our, for example, our left hand derivative, what we're gonna get is like limit as h tends to zero from the negative side, negative one, right? Because negative one minus one because the value at zero is one divided by h, right? Now that's gonna be like negative two over h, and h approaches um, like zero from the negative end, so we're gonna get infinity, right? And then similarly, if we were to analyze, it, analyze the right-hand derivative, we're gonna get limit as h tends to zero from the positive end, one minus one over h, right? 
we're gonna get like hero over here um and then it's gonna be zero over h and um Basically, this is going to still be zero because uh, when we're approaching from the right hand side, our function is um, our function is constant and so the slope remains zero, right? So we see a mismatch and already we saw like it's an infinity here and that's why when we have a discontinuity like this, our uh, derivative does not exist. Okay. And right, so these are basically like all the cases where you can find like functions, uh, like functions having some points where it's not differentiable. Um, and so like when a way to find out uh, if a function is not differentiable, if like later you'll find out ways to do it um, algebraically, but you can also graph it out and look for corners, cusps, discontinuities, and even vertical tangents. So yeah, that's basically it.